glad you, that you're here. We will get a chance to meet you before you leave. Uh, we also have uh, Bob and Marge Quick uh, with us tonight. Praise the Lord for that. I would have got the ladder uh, if I knew you were coming. I checked with Dave, and it's locked up. But we would, if we didn't know, the ladder would have been up here. That's kind of an inside joke of a message one time that uh, uh, I preached, and I had Dave uh, Schreiner put a ladder up here for no other purpose that everybody was sitting there wondering, what's that ladder for? What's that ladder for? Everybody kept waiting for me to make some reference to the ladder. I only had it there to keep people's attention. And Bob, Bob always laughed about that and reminds me of that. So uh, just thanks for the turnout tonight uh, that you're all here. What a blessing. Uh, I haven't preached in a while. I haven't preached to, uh, since uh, Pastor Harris. Uh, I didn't uh, do any ad advocating. I've never done that, you know, about preaching. Uh, I've always left it in the hands of the Lord and let him work it out. And uh, our pastor asked if I would be able to do it tonight, and I never say no, obviously. Uh, I wanna, want you to turn tonight. You know, Ryan Finley always asked me to keep my messages short and sweet. <laughs> I don't know about sweet, but... Uh, I, try, I will try to stay within a reasonable amount of time. And as I told you once before, I learned from a pastor in Florida, Pastor Strange, that you never have done preaching this book. It's, it's endless. And uh, uh, you kind of have to be aware that people, they've worked all day, that uh, you've got places that get getting dark and you've got to get home and all that. I, I'll be sensitive to that. And Pastor Strange had this habit of, he uh, would look at the clock, and if it was 10 after 8 uh, or quarter after 8, he would just stop in the middle of the message and say, I'll pick this up at some later date. So if I do that, don't be insulted. Uh, if it's important, uh, I will pick it up at a, at a later date. And uh, if you've got your Bibles, turn to Galatians chapter 2, chapter 3. Uh, matter of fact, uh, this is my favorite verse. Many of you realize this probably. It's, uh, I'm crucified in Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. It's an excellent verse to uh, sow with. I mean, it just says it all. And if you look at the next verse, uh, it's not in the, in the outline, it's probably on the board there, but if they get it on the board, but it also says, uh, it says, uh, uh, let me see, now I've got to get there, uh, 320, uh, and if the next verse says, uh, wait a minute, am I in the right place? Galatians 2.20, I'm sorry, Galatians 2.20, I got you in 3.20, that's why I can't find the next verse, uh, Galatians 2.20, and if you look at the next verse, it says, which is very important, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. You can't, you can't get saved by works. You can't become righteous. You, you get saved by the grace and the faith of God. And uh, by the way, if you ever want to take a field trip, uh, uh, I'll give you a, a, a suggestion if you're really bored. It probably bore you a little bit more, but in uh, what is that lake? Uh, what is that few place of that uh, place of burial? It's uh, what's it called? Lake, huh? River, River Side, Riverside Cemetery. It's the cemetery. Uh, that's where my wife and I are going to be buried. I don't know why you'd want to know it, but that's that's exact. Well, maybe want to visit it sometime. But you know, on my on, we already have the stone headstone there. And uh, my wife's name is there. We got the date she was born. Obviously, the date she's dead has not died has not not happened yet. She's still here. And the same same thing with, same thing with me. But I, I put on there. Galatians, mine is Galatians two twenty. That verse. My wife has gone home. That always that always bothered my daughter uh, because she says we're this is our home. And, and my wife would always tell her, Oh no no no, my home is up there. But uh, if you ever get bored, you can go visit it. And uh, it's, it's uh, when you get go, very easy to find. I'm going to tell you how to get there. Uh, we, we visit it periodically. We kind of take care of it a little bit, just in case it gets, it gets sloppy over the cemetery. But uh, 
And some of you realize that when I got when I got saved, before I got saved, I was really messed up. I was a, I believed in reincarnation, and uh, I wanted to come back when I died. I wanted to be a pond, and uh, it's kind of interesting. I didn't work this out. We bought the headstone and we bought the property, and at the particular particular time when it was placed there, there wasn't there wasn't a pond, but they built a pond. It's, as you go in it. You go into that cemetery, uh, the first pond, the big one, it has that, that big fountain and everything, and we're, we're right across the street up on the hill. And then, you know, God's got a good sense of humor because you know what else he did? He, he, he put a, another headstone up there that's right, I think it's to the left or to the center, right, right near our, our headstone. And you know, know the person that's buried there, what their name is? Pond. Their last name is Pond. It, it, God has a sense of humor. But that was, uh, that's what I wanted to be until God sent, it. obviously, some of you know, he sent a Norwegian girl from the United Kingdom. She was from the United Kingdom, and she came to my apartment upstairs, gave me a Bible, told me I needed to accept the Lord as my Savior. Your life is a wreck. And make a long story short, a week later before I was going to take my life, I'm on my knees after reading the book of John like she instructed me, and I found, I found the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that he died for my sins, he was buried, he shed his blood, shed his blood, he rose again. And I, in, in, in the book of John, I saw, it was uh, chapter 1, verse 12, it says, as many as received him, to them gave he, gave he the power to become the sons of God. I became a son of God uh, when I received Jesus Christ. That's as easy as it is to get saved. You believe in your heart that Jesus died and was buried and he rose again from the dead, you can find that very, the gospel, it's in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 15, 51, I think. No, no, chapter 15, 1 through 7, or down in there. You, you, you get that news. That's a good news. But the reason why I picked that verse tonight, because it's my favorite one, but it talks about, if you look in that verse 20, it says, uh, uh, I don't know why I keep doing this. But uh, it says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who, um, who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, what I, you know what's interesting about that? W one thing that I've always realized is don't ever fall asleep in church. I, you, you always notice I take notes. I take a note card. Oh, yeah, a three-by-five card. I'm taking notes. It helps me to pay attention, helps me to stay awake. It also, because I'm doing that, I'm not only listening in my ears, but I'm doing something with my body and writing. And it's amazing what you hang on to when you do that. And I noticed, how many times have I quoted from that verse, read that verse, preached that verse, uh, and when I'm out on the, the pier, as you know, I go out there every day jogging, I hand out tracts, talk people about the Lord, give them my testimony, give them the scriptures, and I use this one all the time. But I never saw this until now. Do you notice the punctuation in there? Look at all that punctuation in that verse. You know how many punctuation marks are in there? Seven. Do you think that's by accident? <laughs> Woo. Look at, and look at this. Look how many commas. I'm crucified, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, comma, one. But Christ liveth in me, the colon. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. There's another comma, two. And love me, comma, three. And himself, and gave himself for me. So there, there's seven punctuation marks and three commas. Now, we know that seven is God's perfect number, Correct. And what are the three commas? What's the three commas? Got to be the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You think that there, there's no accidents in the Bible? This Bible is is, is amazing. I, I never saw that till just just uh, I think it was uh, yesterday I saw it. And I go, wow, glory to God. Okay, that's my introduction, and we're going to focus on tonight probably the most important thing about salvation. Not only, I mean, obviously the grace of God is important, but just as important. By the faith, by the faith of the Son of God. Do you know the faith that you had to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection? You know where that came from? It comes from God. It comes from God. And you know how you get it? The Bible says, and I believe it's, uh, uh, well, let's get a definition of, great, of, of faith real quick. Hebrews chapter 11. Well, I'm going to go quick because I want to get to the, the meat of the message here. Uh, Hebrews, and th this is not new material 
for most of you, but it's kind of important in, in, in light of the message. In chapter 11 in Hebrews, uh, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. There you got it right there. I hope you're turning in your Bibles. I, you know how much I love to hear the pages of the Bible flipping over? So make me happy tonight. Turn the pages, make noise with the pages, you know? Hey, faith is a substance. There's substance to faith. It isn't some mystical kind of thing. There's substance to faith. There's su you know what substance is? I mean, it's substance, okay? And, it, and, it's, and it's a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Substance and evidence. There's something powerful about faith. And faith, and you know how you get faith? Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm going to preach a lot of word of God and read a lot of word of God tonight. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I'm just not talking to people who are lost. So I know that this is Thursday night. Probably most of the people in this auditorium tonight are, are, are saved. Okay, I'm talking about continual faith. I read this book because the more I read it, the stronger my faith gets. And that's why you read the Word of God. If there isn't a time in history that God's people ought to be reading the Word of God, this is the time because the devil is doing everything he can, and his devils, and his, the devils, and what are the angels, the evil angels, they're doing everything they can. They'll use your lust of your flesh, the pride of life, the lust of your eyes to get yourself, get, your, get you out of the word of God. This book is more important now, I think, than any other time in history. This world is going crazy. It is going crazy, and it's getting crazier and crazier. I don't know if there's ever going to be a big revival before the Lord. The Lord's return is imminent. I'm 77 years old. Okay, we're going to talk. We're going to look at Moses. He's he wrote a song, and he is 120 years old. And you think that, and you think we have got we don't have we got a lot more time. I don't know if we're going to live to be 120. I'm 77. But we're going, to, we're going to study a man that's just, just amazing. But before we get there, I want you to turn to Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah chapter 3. I'll bet you other than, I don't know if I've ever taken anybody to Zephaniah. Some of you don't even think it's in the Bible, I can imagine. Zephaniah, but go to, go to Malachi. This is how I find it. Go to Zechariah. Malachi's the last of the Old Testament. Then you're going to go to Nahum. Okay, I'm going to work your way back. Make a, make a, make a, Amos, where we got here? Did I miss it? Yeah, I missed it. I got to go back. Zephaniah, here it is. You're going to go to back and you're going to, it's just before uh, Haggai. It's between Habakkuk. I mean, these books you probably read every day, right? <laughs> When's the last time you read Zephaniah? <laughs> I, I can't remember, but... Remember last week I told you, and, and a lot of you looked at me if I was crazy or if I was a charismatic or something, and I'm not. Um, uh, verse 17, our pastor, Pastor Francini, who's is out of town right now, but he showed me this verse. Remember I told you I hear music all the time, especially when I'm alone and it's quiet. I do all my Bible reading in the morning. I get up sometime between 6.30 and 7.00. My wife is a sleeper, so the house is very, very quiet. I, I love it quiet, and I have about two or three hours. I'm all alone with the Word of God, and when I'm alone, there's nothing, no TV on, there's nobody knocking at the door, there's no phone ringing. I won't even answer the phone. In the quiet of the moment, I hear music, really good Bible music. It's really good. It's amazing. I hear songs, and uh, uh and, and I was telling people about that last time I preached. And verse 17 says, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice. He will, he will excuse me, in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Lord sings. Our Lord sings. 
I, I really believe it's him singing. I hear music. I even hear the words of God. And I really believe that if you, met, you get yourself meditating on the word of God, I believe that's available to everybody. But I, I love it when it happens. It just, it just makes things come, come alive. Well, uh, just again, I want to take you one other place. Do, let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 31. Or wait a minute. Uh, I missed the verse. We got to go to Joshua. Can you get there, guys? Joshua chapter 4. In the beginning of the New Testament, you're going to get Genesis, Deuteronomy, Joshua chapter 4. This will kind of prepare, give you a little background, and look at verse, start with verse 19, Joshua chapter 4, verse 19. The Bible says, and the people came up out of Jordan on the 10th day of the first month. The, that month is called Abib. This doesn't say Abib there, but that's what it is. And encamped in Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. And these 12 stones which they took out of the Jordan did Joshua pitch in Gilgar, Gilgal. He spoke unto the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, what meaneth these stones? Then you shall let the children know, saying, Israel came up over, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land, for the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan from before you until you were passed over as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, way back, remember when they did that, which he dried up um, from before us until we were gone over that all the people of the earth might know, all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, and that ye might fear the Lord your God forever. We are his children. Do you, do you realize that these people, they went 40 years in the wilderness, and then they couldn't go. God did away with all that generation because they, they lost their faith. They, they didn't do what God told them to do. And what God said that he was going to, they were going to stay there for 40 years until they all died except for, I think it was Moses. Um, uh, who else was with Moses? It was Caleb. Caleb. And who's the other one? Okay. And those were the three guys that, 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 that and Moses lasted. He was the other than Joshua and, and Caleb. And, and uh, here they were, and then they spent another 40 years, and Moses is about, at this time, he's 120 years of age. Uh, now, go back to Deuteronomy chapter 31. So you kind of get the context that they're getting ready uh, to go over Jordan, and God performs a tremendous miracle. Just like at the Red Sea, he takes the Jordan River, and they go across in the dry ground. Now, in chapter 31, look at verse 22. 31, 22. Yep, Deuteronomy 31, 22. Now, the song that we sang, the shelter in the time of the storm, that isn't, that isn't about what the song that we're going to look at in a moment in 32, okay? Nobody has ever written a song that I know of that I've ever sang or I know that it's been written. Uh, nobody's ever written this song. Uh, kind of like a, in a minute I'll tell you, I'd like to challenge somebody in here tonight about that, but let's, look, let's first look at this verse. Uh, we're going to start with verse 22. Moses therefore wrote this song the same day and taught it, it to the children of Israel. And he gave Joshua, the son of Nun, a, a, a charge and said, Be strong and of good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto thee, and I, and I will be with thee. And it came to pass, uh, we're going to read down to verse 30. 
And uh, let me see, I got to get back to where it was. And it came to pass when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book until they were finished. And Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant, the Lord saying, take this book of the law and put it in the side of the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. For I know thy rebellion. Moses, God gave Moses insight about this thing. For I know thy rebellion. He's talking to Israel. And, and, and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, you have been rebellious against the Lord. And how much more after my death? He knew that even after his death, they were going to be, that they were going to be rebellious. Remember, Moses here is 120 years old. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, and I may speak these words in their ears. And he's talking about this song. Speak these words in, into their ears. And call heaven and earth to record against thee. For I know that after, after my death, you will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way I have commanded you, and evil will befall you in the latter days because you, you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. And Moses spake in the ears of the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. It's a long song in chapter 32. That's the song in 32. You know, I, I kind of got this idea when I was reading Hebrews 11.1 1 about where faith Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of not things of not uh, evidence of things not seen. If you look at that chapter, and most most people, you know, most Christians today know a lot about chapter chapter eleven. It says, "By faith they did this. By faith this one did this. By faith, over and over and over. By faith, by faith, by faith." You know something? If you read those sto all the stories about all those men, Moses, this one right here is that you read that, you, you want to know something? You, your faith will grow. Your faith will grow. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's why, that's why it's important to read the whole Bible. Most of you know I read the Bible through twice a year, every year. I've read it. I've been saved. I got saved when I was 32. I've read the Bible through uh, about, I think it's on my 58th time. And I'm going to tell you something. This book is never the same. And I'm never the same after I read it. My faith grows. My faith gets stronger. God opens things up. There's things he doesn't reveal to you maybe the first time you read it through. And I, I use one of these, and I hand these out when people need them. There's a little card that gives you a check off and all that. I don't want to go, I'll go over all that. But when I, when I saw that verse, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God and the, the definition in Hebrews chapter 1, and then I, I hear, by faith this, by faith that, by faith that, I'm saying, do you know, God can give me the faith to, come, to do things that, you know, normally I wouldn't do. People wonder, you know, every day. I may not look at it, but I, I'm a jogger, you know. My wife calls me a shuffler, you know. Uh, I don't walk. It's somewhere between shuffling and jogging. But in my head, I'm doing a marathon. I'm running like crazy. But I know it's slow. And I, I mean, I like this. This is how I do it. I do this. I do this. Three and a half miles every day. But you want to know something? I always have tracks in my pocket. I always have a track in my pocket. If you show up on that, on that Genesee River, I'm always, always on the, I'm always on the, uh, Francis, Francis owns the, 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 the west side. <laughs> she likes to be with all the people over there. I, I like to where I, I get with a few people and I get to talk with them and their fishermen and everything. And, and thinking, but but I, I see people all the time, fishermen, and I stop. And listen, there isn't any one of you in here that can't do this. You have a testimony. Pastor even asked us to write our testimony, correct? And I, Barbara and I have written our testimony. And uh, that's a, I use my testimony all the time. I give, them a, I give them a track. First, I introduce myself. I tell them who I am. And, and a lot of times, they're fishermen or fisher ladies. And uh, I say to them, I said, you know, I, I see you're fishing. And they don't catch a lot of fish. I, they got to have more patience than I have because they're there all the time, and maybe once in a while they catch a fish. I, I couldn't stand that. I mean, that's why I got a giant, you know. But anyway, they, I, I, I tell you, you know, I'm a fisherman too. I'm, I, I fish for people. I'm, I'm a fisherman for God. 
and I hand them a gospel track, and I said, I give them my testimony and encourage them to read it, and I always, I always give them two or three scriptures. This is simple. You, you've got one memorized already. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever whosoever believed it to him should not perish but everlasting life. Now, I don't say it that fast, obviously, because I want them to get it. But I give them that, that verse. Sometimes, sometimes I tell them after I, you know, I tell them about how I got saved. And I say, I had to receive him. I became a son of God. That's, you know, as many as received him, to them gave me power to become the sons of God. You're preaching the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And I always give them my favorite verse. I'm crucified in Christ, nevertheless I live, da 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 you know. Life, he lives in me, and the life I, which I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave me, he gave himself from, and whatever. But anyway, you know what the word is. You know what it is. If I don't start at the beginning, I, I, get all, I get all fouled up. I know the verse. I know the verse. But anyway, sometimes that's about all I give them. I'm either sowing the seed or watering the seed. I ask them if they've ever done it. If they say no, I say, listen, I'm not pressuring you. There's no pressure here. I just would, I just like that Norwegian girl gave me a Bible. I don't have a Bible. I can't carry Bibles around when I'm jogging. But I, I, I've summarized. We've got this message summarized in here. Would you please take it home and would you, would you read it? And I do that, I do that at five days a week, sometimes six days a week. And there isn't a soul in here. If you're saved, you got a testimony. It's all you need, two or three verses to start. And you know what? you're going to say, well, what if they ask me a question I don't know? Exactly. You know, gee, I'm sorry I don't know the answer to it, but I'll tell you one thing. I will try. I will look for it. Next time I see you, I'll have an answer. You know, if not, or I'll let you know I'm still working on it, and this is where I am. There's nothing wrong with that. Not, not at all. Don't be ashamed. But that's, how, that's what God wants us to do. Okay, I got to move on. The song. Now, why am I talking about the song? Because it's going to give you some faith. Because of, it's going to talk about... You know, some things that Moses thinks are very important. Guy, guy's 120 years old. He's going to die. God's going to take him up to the mountain, show him all the, all the land. He's going to show him the, all, the, all the land that he's given to, to Israel. North, he'll show him all to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. The land of Canaan that he's given to Israel, he's going to do this. And he writes this song. I've never heard the song sang. Is that right? Is that English? Sang song, sing song, whatever. But I've never heard it. Now, I know we've got some very talented people in the ministry here. We've got piano players. There's a couple, three of them in the, we got three piano players in the building tonight, you know. Uh, I heard a gentleman that is uh, sitting out here who played, I don't know, what what is that instrument called? Harmonica. Was that a harmonica? Yeah. Oh, I should have known that. A harmonica. And I heard him playing gospel music with it. So he's got some talent. Josh, he sings. His wife sings. And there's others of you that got talent. Maybe you play an instrument. Uh, I think you could, write this, you could write a song. Wouldn't it be interesting to write a song on the basis of this? It would be amazing. I'm challenging you tonight. Write a song. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a song person. You don't even want to hear my voice. Okay, so let's look at this song. It's amazing. Okay, give ear, O heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew as a small rain upon the tender herbs and as the showers upon the grass. Wow. Only God could do, say something like that. You know this is God's word. You want to know when you got the right kind of music? Do you realize a lot of people think the right kind of music is the music that doesn't do anything different than the words of God? You want to know something? God even given us the Bible to help help us to know what is the right kind of music to listen to because there is a now I don't know the right terminology so I'm going to say a couple of things and if you know the right terminology tell me tell me okay because I like to always get this right but is it the beat or the meter you ever notice the word of God a big word it's not in the Bible because somebody told it to me one time it's called iambic pentameter 
It, it, it's a word that describes that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever. There is a meter. There's a meter. It's a beat to, to, to the music. And you know what somebody told me? It exactly lines up with your heartbeat. And you want to know something? Music that doesn't have the right beat or beat is just the opposite. And a lot of people call it like rock and roll. So you put, you put the right words with the wrong kind of meter and beat, and you're not honoring God's word. Think about that. That's how you distinguish with God's music, other than if, it's, if you can't figure out the, if you know the words are right, you want to know you're listening to the right music, is because it lines up with the beat of your heart. And, and, and the opposite, who do you think is involved in the opposite? Satan, the devil. Think about that. Somebody told me that once. Okay, this is just a beautiful song. And he says, Moses is speaking, because I will publish I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His, his work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of, oh, look at this, God of truth without iniquity. There's no sin in God. Just and right is he. You see that word rock? It's capitalized, isn't it? I believe you'll find it four times in this song. Four times the rock. Four times in here. You know how many times the word rock shows up in the Bible? 40 times. 40 times. Interesting. 40 times in the wilderness. Woo. The rock. You know who the rock is? Jesus Christ. And I don't have time tonight to get there, but you write down Matthew 16, 16 to 18, where, where the Lord says to Peter, upon this rock I'll build my church. And then there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a fake church that has built a whole religion on the basis of that interpreting that Peter was the rock. He wasn't the rock. Jesus was saying he's going to build the church. The church is built upon Jesus Christ. It's not built upon Peter. How ridiculous. Built upon a man. And you study that. And if you want to, want to really see it clear, uh, to, turn to, don't turn there, but write it down. 1 Corinthians 10.4. It'll prove to you beyond a shadow of doubt that Jesus is the rock. Capital R-O-C-K. Wow. Get excited. They, verse 5, they have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. You know, you know who I think this, this is written to? It's written to Jews. But you know who's going to be reading this? That this is going to be a, a significant song? I really believe it's, it's going to be the Jews during the tribulation period. You know, uh, even, like, even the book of Hebrews. You know, it's written to the Hebrews. Those are Jews. That's the tribulation, doctrinally. Okay, but right here, he's saying, they have corrupted themselves. And go on to verse 6. Do, do you thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is he not thy father that hath brought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Although he's talking to Jews here, spiritually, you can look at this as the fact that this song is applicable to today because that same stuff is going on here today is that people are moving further and further away from God. They're getting false gods. Christians aren't coming. You know, this is a great turnout for a Wednesday, for a Thursday night, but m most of the time in most churches on Wednesday or Thursday night, you compare it to Sunday morning, the church has fallen into apostasy. The, the world is getting worse and worse. He, he's describing to the Jews what a mess it is. And he says, remember the days of old, verse 7. Consider the years of many Jason. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. The elders, and, the, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people or to, according to the number of their children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. He loves his people. It's his portion. Jacob is a lot of his inheritance. He found him, verse 10, he found him in the desert land and, and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about, instructed him, and kept him as an apple of his eye. Israel, the apple of God's eyes. You want to know something? God, God loves us, and he instructs us. And even in the midst of all this craziness, you can turn to the word of God, and God will strengthen your faith, and he will give you the courage. And you don't have to be scared, because you know why? He's coming back. Amen? Amen? He's coming back. 
And we can read about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starts with verse 51, and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13, 14, on down through there. It's called the meeting in the air. I prefer that than, than rapture, because rapture isn't in the Bible, the word. I read it as a Bible word. I think it's much more, much more powerful. And he calls it the shout and the voice, and, and the voice of the archangel. And then what comes down? Right the trump, the trump. And it's going to happen. It's close. You don't think it's close? They thought it was close back then. Look at how much time has gone by. It's, he could come back any time. Be prepared. Faith. Have the faith. Don't worry about all this craziness that's going on. It's prophesied. It's prophesied. It's, you want to know something? It's going to get worse. Because once we're gone, you know what? You, if you're not saved here tonight and you haven't accepted the Lord as your Savior, you ought to read the book of Revelations. Start with chapter 5. And you look at the, the tribulation period and what people are going to go. It's going to be a lot like this right here. And it's not, if you think it's bad right now, wait till you, wait, if you have to go through that tribulation period, it's going, to be, it's going to be terrible. But you don't have to. You don't have to. God's provided a way for you to go to heaven in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when that trump blows, you're going to go and be with the Lord. And you're going to be with him forever. Oh, exciting. I don't know about you, but I, that, that gives me goosebumps all over the place. Verse 11. And, and an eagle stirred up her nest, fluttered over her young, spread, spread abroad her wings, taking them, beareth them all in wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. God's leading them in the wilderness. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields, and, and he might... Uh, uh, him to suck honey out of the rocks. He fed them. He took care of an oil out of the flint rock, butter and kine and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of breed. God provided for him, pro provided for them in the wilderness, kidneys of wheat, and they just drank in pure blood of the grape. But Jeshurun, uh, you could probably say, well, who's Jeshurun? It's another name for Israel. It's another name for Israel. But Jeshurun ran, look what happened. He ran, he waxed fat, and, and he kicked, thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him, and lightly esteemed, here it is again, the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with, abominal, with abominations provoked they him to anger. You know, that's what's going on in churches today. You ought to study, I got, I'm writing a message on abominations. All the abominations in the Bible. We got a lot of abominations. You know what abomination is? Strange gods are everything that is more important to you than Jesus Christ. Everything. I live by the Genesee River, and it really bothers me. I'm on my way to church. I see boats, sailboats, up and down the river. I see all these kinds of yachts and boats with motors on them. They're going fishing. On a Sunday morning, where should they be? In the, right here. Or in, in a good Bible-believing church. The rock, oh, there it is again. Of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful and hast forgotten God and f that formed thee. If we, people have forgotten him. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna skip, to skip down because we're running out of time. And, and look at verse 31. For their rock is not as our rock. Notice that's a small rock. That's a small R. But our rock is capitalized. That's Jesus. Even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. And you know what that was all about. Uh, their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of apps. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up many treasures? And it goes on and on and on. And then if you go on, let's look at verse 46. Now you can read the rest of this because it's a great song. I just don't have time. I can accomplish what I need by skipping around. Verse 46. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which you shall command your children to observe to do and of the words of the law. It's nice to see children here tonight. Praise the Lord, because we have a responsibility to children. We have a responsibility to live for the Lord, to teach the Bible, to teach these stories to the Lord, help them to see how much they need the Lord, that they need a Savior, and that to, that to get saved and to serve the Lord, to stay in the Word of God, grow in faith. Verse 47, for it is not vain thing for you because it is your life 
And through this thing ye shall prolong your days in land, whether you go over the Jordan to possess it. You want to know something? You know why God's keeping me alive? I'm 77. I, uh, I, I grew up in a foster care home where there was 11 kids. And all of them are gone except for my older sister and myself. And then I have a biological, all my biological sisters and brothers, except for one is dead, is that, you know, it's getting a little lonely down here in terms of family. You know, I thank God I got a, I got a family. Amen. You're my family, God's family. But, you know, God, I, I, I really wonder, sometimes I wonder, God has kept me alive. And he's kept me pretty healthy, by the way. And so are the rest of you that got the gray hairs, you know. You know, you know why you know why God I really believe why God has done that? He knows you're going to continue to serve him. He knows time is short. Time is short. And he needs us. Don't ever think you're too old to serve the Lord. Right. He needs us to get the gospel out. Remember, that book of Acts does not end in Amen. That book of Acts, they continued to preach the gospel. You are the children of those children. And these children the children of, of your children. They're your children. We could teach them. Tell them these stories. Have them read these stories. And, and uh, verse 12, and, and of Benjamin, he said, uh, oh, no, excuse me, verse 18, 48. And the Lord spake unto Moses that selfsame day, saying, Get thee up into this mountain, Abram, unto the Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is uh, over against uh, Jericho. Behold, the land of Canaan, which I will give unto the children of Israel for possession, and die in the mount whither thou goest up. And he gathered unto the people as Aaron thy brother died in Mount Hor, and, and was gathered unto his people. He, you know where he went to? Abraham's bosom, which is in the ground, Abraham's bosom. At that particular time, when these people died who knew the Lord, they went, they went down into Abraham's bosom. Read that in Luke chapter 16. The man in hell and the man who went to Abraham's bosom. And the man in hell is praying for his brothers and sisters. And he's, he's in hell. Uh, when, Jesus, when Jesus came back, he went down there and he, he basically he said it was done. He took care of it. Uh, and those people, remember they get, came out of the graves and they were walking, walking around Jerusalem and everything. And then what happened to them? They went to heaven. We go to heaven today when you die. Okay? Your soul. And verse 50. And, oh, excuse me, 51. Because you trespass against me, against the children of Israel, he's talking to Moses, uh, at the waters of Mirabal, Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin, because ye sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel. Remember, God told him to, he was supposed to uh, speak to the rock, and what did he do? He took the, the, the rod and he beat the rod, and that was against what God said. Because of that, he couldn't go into the land. You sh you shall see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go thither unto the land which I give unto the, unto the children. Wow, what a song. Somebody needs to write this song. We, uh, we need to sing this song once you write it. I would really like to hear it. It is written to Israel, but there are a lot of applications in this song to this age that we, that we live in because the same thing is kind of going on right now. People are just all over the place. They're not in the church house. They're not using the gifts that they've got, they've God's given them to serve, serve the Lord and win souls to the Lord Jesus Christ and the church to disciple them so they can, they can go out and also talk to the Lord. Time is short, people. Time is short. If not anything else, this song might motivate you to use the testimony that God has given you to preach it to others so that God the Holy Spirit can take it and apply it to their hearts and that they would, they would have an opportunity. You can't save them. They get saved by the faith of grace. But you can, you can sow the seed. That's the word of God. You can water that miracle. What did, what did, Jesus, what did Jesus say to Nicodemus in John chapter 3? He was a Pharisee, strictest religion. He was a religion. All the commandments, he tried to keep them. And Jesus said to him, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, ye, ye must be born again. You're first born out of the womb of your mother. The second birth is a spiritual birth. And you get that birth by accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. 
just like one of the thieves on the cross. He looked there and saw Jesus. The other one rejected him. He said, Lord, what did he say? Remember me when thou comest unto thy kingdom. Remember me when thou comest unto thy kingdom. He, looked, he said, Lord. He called him Lord. He accepted him. Where did he go? He went there. It's as simple as it is. Jesus died, shed his blood on the cross of Calvary for every soul on this earth, for everybody in this room. That's all you have to do is believe by his faith in that and ask him into your heart and he will save you. And then get down to work in the sense of he'll, he'll give you the faith to grow, to be able to do and use the gifts that he's given you to reach others for the Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of gifts in this room, a lot of gifts. A lot of people are serving, doing this and this and that and using their gifts. He just gave me the gift of gab, which he calls preach. So I preach. That, that's, that's what I'm, I can do by his power. And so that's what I'm going to do to the day I die. I'm going to preach. I'm going to shuffle around or jog around. I'm going to keep tracts in my pocket. And if I run into a lost person or anybody, I'm going to offer them a gospel tract. My wife and I, we pick about five or six restaurants. We don't go to all these fancy restaurants. We go where, you know, it's easy to talk to people. The tables are close. And we get to know the waitresses, and we hand out tracts to the waitresses. We buy people dinners to get their attention. We do everything possible to get people's attention so we can get a gospel tract in their hand. I put them in the bathrooms at McDonald's, you know. You know, there's, sometimes there's two stalls. Each stall gets one. There's two sinks. Put them on the sinks, you know. I don't, I don't know what the women's bathroom looks like, but there's probably a lot of, a lot of opportunities there. But I'll put a track anywhere. Uh, I put it at the end of the, if you go to the end of the dock, on my dock, not Francis's is over there on the west side, but on the east side, if you go over on the east side, my, you see a track shoved on, under that little metal piece and this big cement block thing. I put that track there, and I check it out every day. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Uh, one thing, though, something about when we make these tracks, when, when it rains too much, they stick together. Then I have to put a new one there. But that, type, folks, get these out. There's piles of them out there. Get them out to people. Talk to people. We have a tremendous opportunity here. You get preached the truth here. It, 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 if you thought this message was good, praise the Lord for that if it is. But listen, you ought to come when our pastor's here. Oh, you should come Sunday. Right here, Josh is going to be preaching. Praise the Lord. I'm excited. I'm excited about that. Sunday night, you know who's preaching? Teandre, right there. He's going to preach Sunday night. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Come to be in church. Be in church. And I know we're a little late. i got to just show you this verse. Uh, uh, I should have showed you before. Can't find it. If I can't find it, Hebrews chapter 10. Real quick, Hebrews chapter 10. And I'll let you go. Hebrews chapter 10. I don't see anybody falling asleep, so. Hebrews chapter 10. This is great. This is why, this is why you should be in church. A lot of people think coming to church is for them. It's true. But look what he says here. Verse 23, Hebrews 10, let us hold fast the profession, there it is, of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and the good works. That's what I'm doing here tonight. I'm provoking you unto love and the good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, exhorting one another, Another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Notice what coming to church does. You're provoking, you're provoking others to love and the good works. That's why you come. He tells you you're provoking people to love and to do good works, and not for salvation. That has nothing to do with salvation. And, it's, and by exhorting one another, so much as you see the day approaching, we should be exhorting each other building each other up, not fighting with each other, not having division and lack of unity, but unity in Jesus Christ. That's, that's what church is all about. That's why I come. I come because you exhort me, you challenge me, you provoke me to love. You, but when we shake hands and we talk on the way out, and it's amazing. That's why I come. And that's why you should come to church. And people that aren't coming to church, they are missing out on big stuff. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight.
for the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for all that you have done in each and every heart that is in here. Lord, there may be somebody here lost tonight, does not, has not yet made that decision uh, to accept the Lord. I pray they wouldn't leave here tonight. If they would talk to one of us and, and uh, ask about salvation, maybe they understand it. Maybe finally they got it. And they got got, and they're going to act upon the faith that God gave them to ask Jesus Christ in their heart. Maybe there's one tonight that has not ever been baptized. Baptism has nothing to do with salvation. It comes followed follows salvation, and it's becoming a part of a local church, being baptized, manifesting that you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, being just going under the waters, death and the burial, and rising out. And it's just showing people that you have already accepted Jesus as Savior. Maybe that is maybe that is what you need to do, too. And uh, you need to let somebody know that you need to be baptized. Whatever it is, take care of it with the Lord today. I'm going to give you, tonight, to right now, I'm going to give you a few minutes to come to the altar if you need to come tonight, and then we'll be done, okay? Come. If you need to come tonight, come. Nobody comes, we're done.